Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today is Thursday. It's September 29th. The month is almost over. My birthday is exactly a month from now. So it's October 29th. The market's opening not too bad. I was expecting actually a weaker opening. The markets have been dragged down by global economy. I've been noticing markets opening up, I mean, closing pretty good and then opening up lower and then heading back higher. That's because the global economy is starting to ascertain what we've been seeing in this country. And Japan's suffering, uh, England is suffering, other parts of Europe are suffering, and Asia's not doing so well. But right now we're down about 162 on the Dow and about 120 on the NASDAQ. And just to give you a weather update, the storm has been downgraded. It's just a nasty rain here. We're all the way in the upper east part of, uh, of Florida. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for sending me some amazing wishes and, and, and concerns. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm hoping, fingers, toes crossed, everything will be okay, but I do appreciate it very much. It's really good to be North Florida because things don't hit you as often, but we pray for everybody in Miami, Tampa. I know that Southwest Florida got really taken out. So uh, for anybody out there, I'm really, really feeling it for you. Um, and folks, if you're, and I really want to appreciate the fact that you guys are posting comments below this video on the YouTube channel. If you've been doing that, please do so. If you have questions, post them there and I will answer them. Now, let's get into today's video. You've got global economy today, but we're waiting for something to happen in about, uh, it's about 747 right now. We're waiting for this to happen in about 47, 43 minutes, we're going to have the GDP. Now, this is the most important report aside from the CPI and the PPI, which is the most important report right now because that's what the Fed is looking for, for um, guidance in terms of whether we've peaked or not. But um, GDP quarter over quarter, uh, we're looking at about negative 0.6 and personal consumptions 1.5 up now i'm hoping that this number is a little bit higher than 1.5 maybe 1.6 maybe 1.7 but if this is the number it is baked into the market and the good thing is we're going to hear about it about an hour before the market opens so we'll have plenty of time then we've got jobless claims jobless claims is really a nothing burger right now there's just not much there there's not much going on um it, it's been fairly steady there hasn't been any major it's been holding around 220 230,000 uh hasn't been really moving uh, as you can see here the four week moving average is 216,000 and initial claims are between 212 and 220 so we're right on the level right here and consensus is 218 again even if it's off just a little bit i don't see that being a, a real 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 big deal now, in terms of volatility, I believe we have peaked out. The market's looking a little stronger. Small caps are still holding on. If you look at momentum levels in the NASDAQ 100, it really looks like we've bottomed. And if we haven't bottomed, it looks like we're very close to bottom. This is why I'm very hesitant to liquidate stocks that are going against us right now, because the market is so oversold. And if we can just hold on just a little bit longer, the odds are it will move in our direction, which I'm very hopeful for. Now, this is the number of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average in the NASDAQ 100. If you look at the S&P and the number of stocks trading above the 50 day moving average, that's the 50 day moving average in the S&P, not the NASDAQ, you will see that we're really at those levels again. I mean, look, COVID was around here, right? But you'll notice every time we come down here, it tends to bounce back. Now, one thing we have not had is the capitulation yet. Now, we don't necessarily have to have a capitulation, but typically we see a capitulation before we move higher. Uh, put the call ratio is still coming off of the highest level I have ever seen in history. Yes, highest levels I have ever seen in history. And this number is starting to come off a bit as well. So this is telling me that the market sentiment is turning higher. Matter of fact, and this is something I've been pointing out to everyone, if you look at the Russell, look at that, 15% of stocks are trading above the 50-day moving average. S&P, less than half, seven. Look at this, 20% above 200-day moving average, only 15%. NASDAQ, 11%. Look at this, 20%. 10%, 15%. So the Russell is still outperforming. And again, speculative stocks tend to lead during downturns. Now let's talk a little bit about global economy and then I'll get into levels and the strongest and weakest sector and stock, all right? So European stocks tumbled Thursday. Asian markets were mixed after British Prime Minister Liz Truss 
defended a tax cut plan that rattled investors. I don't know. I don't know. England is not in a good place right now. Not at all. Europe is not doing really well. Markets rebounded Wednesday after Bank of England said that it would buy government bonds to stop a price slide. So that's good. And that's that's showing us that the world is, in fact, doing something about this. And, and somebody is reacting to this. And it, it, it's not just all kind of let's see what U.S. does. And I think that's one of the factors that strengthened the U.S. market overnights as well. On Wednesday, the S&P surged 2%, the Dow 1.9%, NASDAQ 2.1%, and I'm going to tell you something. I think the Russell was up close to 3% or about 25 It was higher. British pound was trading at about $1.08, up from a record low of $1.3.73. It's lost 4% of its value since last Friday. And despite Wednesday's gain, the S&P is down 20% from its January 3 record which officially puts it in a bear market. Quite honestly, I thought it was up uh, down more than 20, but 20 is right at that benchmark. The yield on the 10-year treasury or the difference between market price and the payout exceeded 4%, highest level in decade. Folks, things are not turning uh, as, as rosy around the globe, and that's what's really causing us. But I am encouraged because most of the downside I've been seeing has been coming from global markets, not U.S. stocks. Investors increasingly worry about aggressive interest rate hikes this year by U.S. Federal Reserve and central banks in Europe and Asia to cool inflation that's at a multi-decade high that might tip global economy into a recession. Investment giant Vagard put the chances of a U.S. recession at 25% this year and at 65% next year if the Fed follows through on expectations that it will raise rates again and keep them elevated throughout next year, which is a very, very, very strong possibility. Now, as I mentioned, most of these sectors are grossly oversold. And as you can see now, they're, they don't just look as bad as the 200-day moving average. They are looking worse, something that I predicted about a month ago. The good news is, if we look at the NASDAQ and if you look at the number of stocks making 20-day highs, let's just see, 20-day breakouts, 20-day breakdowns, Oh, don't tell me it's not working now on me. <laughs> it just, it, it, it never fails to disappoint. Let's see if I can get it open. But it was, it was lower. It was substantially lower. Ugh, it doesn't want to do it right now. It's, it's got a mind of its own. Let's go to um, sectors here. Let me just go to here. Market performance. So when we go to the various sectors, you will see that energy, energy is still the leading sector. Communication services, which is really odd, and over a month period of time, you'll see healthcare consumer discretionary staples. Folks, that's a market that's really, 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 really fragmented. So I would be very, very cautious right now. Now, in terms of what I'm looking at, let me just go to the S&P again. Let me give you some levels. For the SPY, for the SPY, I believe we're going to come back up and we're going to come all the way up to this channel and we're going to kind of go sideways. The bond market right now, let's look at the bond market. The bond market, from what I'm seeing, is starting to strengthen. And if the bond market keeps strengthening, it'll push stocks, especially consumer stocks, back within this channel. If the bond market comes back to this channel, there's a good chance the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ and everything else will start moving higher as well. As you notice, the Dow and the bond market are really, really following each other. So right now we have to be very careful because the market could be in, falling into a recession. And if that's the case, you wanna be very careful. Therefore, what I would focus on right now would be healthcare, 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 healthcare. Lily looks really good. Uh, ABBV looks really good. Healthcare, notice they're, they're, they're breaking out quite nicely. Not all of them, but they're, they're not mo moving really lower right now. Um, Healthcare stocks are doing good. Matter of fact, AbbVie, uh, uh, Bristol, uh, BMY is, is a good stock. Healthcare stocks, they don't have as much exposure to the broad market in terms of interest rate fluctuations and recession. So there's a good chance they'll go higher. In terms of bearish stocks, folks, I'm going to tell you again, uh, DISH, DISH, DISH Network and Charter Communications. I think this is going to go lower and charter communications. Don't see any love for these stocks, and I would fade any rally in these two stocks. So communication services, worst healthcare, best right now. That's the strongest sector. Uh, I would say healthcare, weakest sector, communication services, stronger stock, the healthcare stocks. 
weakest stocks dish and charter now now i also promised to give you the number one sector of the week now the number one sector as i said is healthcare i'm really liking healthcare and i'm going to give you the option as well now the option for this would be we would go to one D january 20th it's about a 123 strike so we would probably go to the 125 if you want to do a spread you could do the 125 and sell the 140. so buy the 125 and sell the 135 or 140. the bottom line is that's probably the best situation you would find right now so now you've got the top etf and option as well now in fact, folks, Warren Buffett is making one of the biggest investments of his entire career on the back of this trend. He's personally, personally poured $11 billion of his own money into this development. Buffett calls it the greatest generational opportunity of our lifetime, not to be missed. So you heard the man, this is not to be missed. And it's set to happen as soon as this winter. In the link below, I've put together research on how to prepare for what could be the next emerging super cycle of the decade. Follow the link below, check it out right now, and I'll talk to you guys later. Don't forget, l follow comments, post, post comments in the YouTube channel. Send me emails at support at marketgeeks.com. Bye, guys. Have a great, great day.